Now, my friend, you're just proving. Go ahead and prove to the entire Christian community, dude, that you're not a real Christian. Hey, Faith family, it's Brother Mario. I pray you guys are having a great day. Quit saying that. It's so fake and rehearsed. I know many of you are going to comment and say, Mario, <laughs> you keep saying it's going to be your last video. I promise this will be my last video. In this one, I'm going to give out my full confession before I go to rehab. Um, now, I had to pray for a lot of courage to make this video. It's not going to be an easy one for me. I'm going to try and keep it together. But I'm about to confess some uh, pretty uh, shameful, disgusting things about myself. Uh, but I need to do this so that I can get better. Um, all sorts of people are on the internet now exposing me. And by the way, thank you guys. Uh, I just want to let you know God has used you to help me get the help that I need in my life. You're welcome. I'm glad to help. I'm glad you're getting better. I love even people who put, position themselves as my enemies. I never said you were my enemy. I said you're an enemy of God. I love you and I just want you to know I completely forgive you and God worked all this out for my good. <laughs> you forgive me? You just said thank you for helping you, for helping expose you. But you forgive me? This guy is so passive aggressive. He'd love nothing more than to scream, yell, rant, and cuss us all out. But he's trying to play it off like these videos don't bother him. When in reality, he made this video because he knows I was about to upload a video with screenshots from girls on Instagram he sent more nudes to. This video is damage control, but more on that later. I'm going to get the help and treatment I need and... Uh... He used many of you guys to do that. But, um, you know, you guys are a little vicious in the way that you make videos about me. <laughs> oh, really? We're vicious. And what are you? You are an embarrassment to the Christians here. You have no fruit to the Spirit. What, an, what a disgrace you are. When you stand in front of God, you're going to be disgraced. Total disgrace. An embarrassment to Jesus Christ because you have no fruit. You're an embarrassment to Jesus Christ. You have no spiritual maturity. Now, my friend, you're just proving. Go ahead and prove to the entire Christian community, dude, that you're not a real Christian, that you don't have any spiritual fruit. Well, I'm sorry, Mario, that we all can't be as gentle and loving as you. So I figured, hey, I'm just going to expose myself here and lay it all out. Oh, so now he's finally going to be honest with us. Okay. So as you guys uh, probably know, if you watch my recent video, I'm on uh, a waiting list to go to a uh, Christian rehab uh, here in the capital in Ottawa, in Canada. Uh, I placed myself on there because of uh, crippling addiction. Um, I can't overcome this, and I've just recently come out of denial. Recently come out of denial? Your last 15 videos have been about how you need to go to drug treatment. <laughs> what are you talking about recently come out of denial? I had many years where, you know, when I first got saved, I got sober for like eight months and I thought I was, I was good. I'm, I'm no longer an addict. And okay, this is a rerun. We have heard you say this before. You said this was full confession. So why are you telling us the same things you have said many other times in other videos? And it doesn't stop. <laughs> so recently I've admit that I need help. I <sighs> should have kept the fast forward on. We've heard this before. You just said this two minutes ago. I'm an addict and um, I need rehab. We're like six minutes in this video and... <laughs> And this is your confession, the same thing that you've been telling us for the last three months? Um, oh, this is so hard. <laughs> All right, come on, Mario. Mario Bryson in Beating a Dead Horse. 
coming soon to a theater near you. Um, I just want to also touch on the point that uh, one of the reasons I think I'm struggling so hard with drug and uh, sexual addictions is because of, in my past, I used uh, drugs uh, spiritually. Ah, oh, yes, we know. You've said this dozens of times in other videos. When are you going to say something new? People use them recreationally. I actually used to use them in a new age practice like a shaman. So I opened myself up with drug use. Uh, I opened up doors and things that shouldn't be opened up. And in sex, I was, uh, in, uh, I was a yoga instructor. So I was really drawn to Tantra, which is sex yoga. And again, that is opening yourself up spiritually to so many things. Remember on the first video I made, I showed the text messages he had with this other girl where he was sending her astrology charts and talking to her about New Age and saying that that stuff was okay. So here he is being dishonest again. Mario, you really need to stay off YouTube because you continue to contradict yourself with every video you make. And I think that um, the, the wound in my heart, which I'll discuss, is the root of my addiction, plus opening up all these doors and the traumas that I've had in my life have created the situation that I'm in right now. And that's why I need to go to rehab for nine months and be rehabilitated and healed and treated. What happened to ashes to rubies? What happened to Pastor John? <laughs> I don't understand. Please explain this. Where's Pastor John? Where's your life lab? Ashes the rubies. Where is it? You were talking about that for like three months. Like that was the big key to your healing. Now you haven't mentioned it and you're talking about a completely different treatment center? Why don't you address that? My guess, and I don't know for sure, but my guess would be that you violated some rule in the program and he had to kick you off of it. Because it's so funny how you don't even mention it anymore. And this is supposed to be a 100% confession. So why don't you fill in the blanks and let us know why you're no longer in Pastor John's rehab program. Because it's, uh, it, it's, it's heavy. So here it is. <clears throat> you guys know I've been struggling with marijuana. Uh, I've talked about alcohol. Alcohol's maybe a bigger problem than I had first realized. Yeah, we figured you've been drinking alcohol. That's not a surprise. Um, porn, masturbation. But the one that I, uh, I, I, I've had trouble to confess is cocaine. That's the big reveal. Um, Mario, we already figured you are a coke head. It's not, like, that hard to figure out. <laughs> I'm a really good salesman. <laughs> <laughs> he, he seems... <laughs> he, he seems like he really felt like he had the wool pulled over our eyes this entire time and that cocaine is really going to shock us. Uh, Mario, we knew. <gasps> what is he looking at? Look at his eyes. He's trying to sell these tears, but something else has his attention. Maybe his camera is hooked to a computer and he's glancing at the screen to make sure he looks convincing. I don't know, but it seems odd to me for someone who is weeping from all of this godly sorrow to make a deliberate effort to glance at something from the corner of their eye. Typically, when one is overwhelmed with sorrow the way he claims to be, their focus doesn't just shift like that when pouring out their heart. Now look how he follows that up. <laughs> he takes a beat and then amps it up with an inhale exhale. To dial up the emotion. This is acting. It looks rehearsed. It looks like he glanced over to check how he looked. To make sure he is coming across convincing. 
Now let's watch the entire sequence in real time and you can see the staged buildup for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. Mario sounded like he's sending an iPhone text with his mouth. <laughs> I told you it's not going to be easy. <sighs> You're an embarrassment to Jesus Christ. So in those times of relapse, sometimes I would get cocaine and this use got worse and worse to the point that it is now. It's not a daily habit, but when I binge, I can binge for a little while. And um... <sighs> it's a problem and I need help. You have no spiritual maturity. I've been living a double life as a hypocrite. What? Wait. Wait. No. No. No, are you serious? Mario, when did this start? <laughs> I am being persecuted because I take a stand for righteousness and truth. This is not who I want to be in my heart. But because I did not get my addiction treated, um, these things started to continue to get worse and worse. You said you were getting treatment with Pastor John. You never did tell us what happened with that. Um, God showed me that the reason I'm an addict is because of a wound in my heart. God had to give you revelation that there was a wound in your heart? Of course there's a wound in your heart which makes you do all these things. That's common sense. I'll discuss that more, I'm sure, when I come back and share with you my recovery testimony, but... There's a massive wound in my heart, and what I'm doing is I am seeking to, to, to self-medicate myself. And so instead of going to God to heal and mend that wound, that deep inner wound that comes from my childhood, um, I'm going to substances, to sex, to women to give me gratification, to give me... I'm going to things to get what only God can give me, and I'm tired of it. You said you were turning to the Life Lab program with Pastor John, Ashes the Rubies. So what are you talking about that you're turning to other substances and not God like you should be? So because the wound wasn't healed in my heart, imagine you cut yourself. It gets infected. That's what my, my wound has been getting. So my, my addictions, every time I've been relapsing, they were getting worse and worse. And another factor that made things really, really bad is uh, the YouTube money. Um, I made uh, half a million dollars in five years off my YouTube channel. Okay, finally, something new. And what'd you do with the money? And that money, because I was an addict, because I was not treated, some of it got used. <laughs> a lot of it got used for shit. I don't have anything to show for it today. I owe the government and I'm going bankrupt. <laughs> okay, now this probably is genuine tears. He's not faking here. I'd be crying like that too if I blew $500,000 in five years. What, an, what a disgrace you are. When you stand in front of God, you're going to be disgraced. Ooh. I've never made money like that. I never did. I was making fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars a month. Sometimes, I had money now to fuel addictions that I never had before, and I was living in shame and guilt, and living a double life, and hating myself all the, the while. People uh, have said things um, like, "Mario, you only came clean when you got exposed." Yeah. So my sex addiction also continued to get worse because it, it was left untreated as any untreated disease or illness or wound will. You're an embarrassment to Jesus Christ. You know, part of my wound is that I, I, I'm, I'm seeking, I, I need, I need to, <laughs> you, know, 
It comes from my dad. And dad, I love you. I don't know if you're watching this. I don't blame you for this at all. I know your mom hurt you. And uh, you have your own wound to heal from. But uh, you hurt me in a way that I never felt good enough. And I've always been seeking validation from people and things. He is making some valid points here. But at the same time, he's trying to gain sympathy from the viewers. This is how a master manipulator works. You have to be able to see through the tears. Just because one of your parents has wounded you does not give you a license to scam people on YouTube. Many people, in fact I'd say the majority of people, have been hurt and wounded by one of their parents, if not both. But that doesn't mean that you get to take advantage of other people and when you get caught, create a mountain of excuses and then expect everyone to give you sympathy. And so, uh, in high school, we didn't uh, have, like, I, I'm uh, 33, so back when I was in high school, we still had the non-smartphones, the, I don't know if you guys remember the Nokias, but, um, there was no such thing as sexting, but that came later, and, uh, once I started to get into that and started to receive this validation coming back from the photos. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is gross and there's a lot of shame. I'm going to try and get through this. But I need therapy. Like, I don't know if you can tell. I no, for real? I couldn't tell. I didn't know you needed therapy. Wow, that's strange. What do you need therapy for? So I would start receiving validation from the messages and the, and this would temporarily fill that void in my heart. And, uh, oh, okay, this is not going to be easy. You are an embarrassment to the Christians here. I've also been a love and relationship addict. I don't know if you guys understand what that is, but basically because there's a wound in my heart, because I'm not healed, I'm seeking through a relationship, love, sex, to give me a sense of um, validation, comfort, intimacy that only God can provide. And uh, my sex addictions got worse and worse and progressed continuously worse and worse. What started off as sexting and camming. Oh, man. Okay. Here it is. I've called escorts. I... <laughs> so that's where the other half of the donations went <laughs> but seriously you seem to be really embarrassed and full of shame and guilt for that and you didn't have to confess that so i applaud you for your honesty there and yeah while i wouldn't advise adding soliciting prostitutes to your resume it pales in comparison to the way you use God to run a phony ministry on YouTube for so long. One you would probably still be running today if you had not been exposed in January. Even in that, God will forgive you if you truly turn to Him. And I think the best way you can prove your sincerity is to delete your vigilant vlog channel and stay off YouTube. And if you did that, I'd take down all of these exposed videos I've done on you. Because I only made them because you were a threat to young Christians who thought you were who you claimed to be. Delete your channel, and I have no reason to keep these videos on mine. I've gotten so lonely and needed companionship so bad. I'm called an escort. Now, my friend, you're just proving. Go ahead and prove to the entire Christian community, dude, that you're not a real Christian. <laughs> Total disgrace. An embarrassment to Jesus Christ because you have no fruit. And so there it is. There's everything. No, 
There is no way that is everything. He's definitely deflecting. There are some much bigger issues he's not divulging. Come on, Mario. Tell us who you really are. Tell us the truth. The God is a God of grace and mercy. This weekend, I'm five days sober, praise God. One day at a time. I'm going to uh, AA meetings and I'm meeting up with pastor and I'm trying to stay in community and uh, I'm on my way to uh, a Christian rehabilitation home for nine months so they can uh, help me. I'm so broken. <laughs> Look at the way he looks at the camera. <laughs> this is so fake. Look. Busted. Yeah, so it's pretty clear to see now that this whole thing is an act. He's totally faking. Look at this. <laughs> Are they looking? Do they feel sorry for me? <sighs> oh. So this weekend I went to a men's conference. <laughs> Notice how he's going to transition into a story where he's going to start to hint that he's getting better. Because ultimately, his agenda is to resume his phony ministry on his YouTube channel. And, um, there was a speaker there that spoke. It was the Band of Brothers Men's Conference and just awesome. So if this men's conference was so awesome... Then why are you so down and out? I'm so happy God's placing this recovery team, this Christian ministry that specializes in addiction in my life, and I'm very thankful he's placing these men in my life. Okay, let's check out a clip from a video you made less than two months ago. I started a program. It's called Life Lab. If you guys are from, I started it last week. It's a five month program that's given by my local church and by Pastor John. It's a journey from ashes to rubies. And it's a very thorough, big program. If I don't end up being successful the first time through the program, I'm gonna do it a second, a third, a fourth time. Because I need restoration and this is the restoration. It's through his church and through his people and through ministries like the one I'm gonna be attending at rehab. Again, what happened to Life Lab? What happened to Pastor John in Ashes to Rubies? Did you think that you <laughs> did you did you think as much as you advertised and promoted that program that we would just forget about it and that you could just talk about this new program and no one's going to ask what the heck happened? To ashes the rubies. And the same thing happened a couple years ago when he said he joined this new church under Pastor Todd and that he was under Pastor Todd. He was submitted to Pastor Todd now and that Pastor Todd was holding him accountable and keeping him clean and all this. And that went on for like two, three weeks, maybe a month, and then abruptly disappeared. No more mention of Pastor Todd. And he just resumed life like Pastor Todd never existed. There was a Band of Brothers conference and one of the speakers, Jim, went up. And he shared his testimony about how um, he had once made a decision to follow Jesus, but not a commitment. Oh, that's why. That's the answer. You only made a decision to follow Jesus all these years on YouTube. You hadn't known that you had to make a commitment. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. We got a solution. It's commitment, not decision, people. And uh, his walk with God was marked with lukewarmness and difficulty and 
not truly living an empowered life as Christ would call us to. And God brought him to a place where he, uh, he had him not only decide to follow, but commit to it, to submit, to surrender, to yield, all that. Who knew all along all Mario had to do to break all of his addictions was just to submit and yield and all that. And that is the missing puzzle piece that Mario's been looking for all these years on YouTube. The answer was right in front of him and he just couldn't see it. But now he's seen the light. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, isn't this what I said from day one? Is that all these videos, all this talk about focusing on God and focusing on rehab and all of that was ultimately just a ploy to try to earn back the public's trust so he could resume running his phony ministry and collecting donations. Oh, donations came in tonight. Hmm. Do I want a blonde or a brunette? Hmm. Saturday, April 6th, God used that testimony. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Mario, and he did an altar call after for men who wanted to recommit themselves to the Lord, and I went up weeping with tears. No, no way. You were crying? <laughs> I don't believe it. That's so unlike you. And the Lord spoke to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he did. Sounds legit. I wonder what he said to you. My son, resume your YouTube channel and make me proud. And tell Gary828 to quit judging you and I pray for you. And said, by his spirit in my heart, Mario, you're going to get another chance. <laughs> That's what he said. And I I bet he was talking about YouTube too, right? To do this. Because I'm a merciful God. I don't care about your sin. I have died for it. I agree he doesn't care about your sin. But he does care that you pretend to be a Christian on YouTube for money. So you can buy a honey. <laughs> I'm a God of mercy and grace, and you're my son, and I love you. But I need you to commit to sobriety. Oh, so Mario finally realizes now that he needs to commit to sobriety. Oh, oh, oh that's so simple. Who to thunk? Not only me, but being sober. Sobriety has to be the most important thing in your life moving forward with me. I am being persecuted because I take a stand for righteousness and truth. So I recommitted my life to Jesus Christ five days ago. Yeah, well, you certainly look like it. You really seem like you're getting the victory in your walk with him. Five days sober, recommitted your life to Jesus, and now you look better? I'm very excited to go to Jericho. It's um, in the Bible, by the way. Jericho is where the walls fell down. Oh, are you going to have as much success at Jericho as you did with Ashes to Rubies? <laughs> and these are walls in my life I haven't been able to tear down. And I think now through this, God is finally going to tear down my walls. <laughs> I thought you were going to rise from the ashes and turn into a beautiful ruby. But instead of casting me in hell, instead of abandoning me, God in his infinite mercy and grace has made a way to restore my soul and allow me into the promised land. I've been wandering in the desert and I need those Jericho walls to fall and I'm going to Jericho Road. <laughs> Cringe. To get them to fall in Jesus' name. And I'm going to come back and tell all you addicts about how Jesus can set you free. 
Just like I've been saying, all this is is an attempt to earn back viewers trust so that he can resume making money on YouTube. That's all this is about. Once you can identify it, it really does become comical. It really is like watching a comedy show. If he could do it for me, he could do it for you. I'm one of the worst depraved, sick human beings. I knew Jesus Christ. I knew the truth. And I still... Is it just me, or does he look a bit like a younger Robert De Niro? Well, we definitely know who the better actor is. You talking to me? Was caught in that film. There is no greater sinner than that. I believe that's worse than murder. I know Jesus. You know he's telling the truth because he hung his head. So if God can have mercy and grace on me, he can have mercy on you. Well, shucks, that about settles that then, don't it? Folks, if the Lord can help Mario, then I guess he can help any of us. I think Mario needs to make YouTube videos about this and tell us all about it and collect donations. <laughs> the world needs to hear about this. Mario, you should think about starting up a YouTube channel or something to talk about all this information, all, all, all this insight you got. Oh, trust me, he can. My, I need, you know, it's either, there, there's two, there's two options. I die, this stuff's going to kill me, or I go to Jericho and I die to self. And I allow God to make me new. Then that's what I'm going to do. You have no fruit to the spirit. It's been getting too bad. Recently, I've been um, when I do relapse and I binge, I go to the point of blackout. I don't even remember what I do. I wake up the next morning and I look on my phone at the garbage that I sent out. And I don't even remember doing it. <laughs> FYI, I have been informed by an acquaintance of Mario's that he doesn't want me making more videos about him. And he has found out, I would assume by reading comments on my videos, that I am making a new video providing screenshots women have sent me of the nudes he sent them on Instagram. So because he knew I was going to upload this video this week, this is him doing damage control to explain why he sent nudes out. It's because he blacked out, y'all. Yeah, I believe that. Seems legit. That lie is almost as good as the one he created to explain why he had pics of naked men on his phone. Oh, man. Oh, the shame, I'm telling you. There's so much shame in this garbage. You're an embarrassment to Jesus Christ. <sighs> Come on, full confession. What haven't I confessed? You know, one thing that was happening, too, is... Um, I was getting hypersexuality induced by drugs and alcohol. Uh, if you don't know what that means, hypersexuality is when you're, you're considering sexual things that you normally wouldn't. And when I would drink and get drunk and, and do cocaine, smoke weed, that's what would happen. And um, yes, I've had homosexual thoughts. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we knew that too, Mario. Why don't you just go ahead and admit the rest? I thought this was a 100% confession. I think this is only like 50% confession. So what you're saying is when you get hypersexuality induced by drugs and alcohol, that that causes you to think about being with men. You don't act on it. No, no, you don't do anything like that. All you do is, is just think about it. Because that's what you do usually when you're really hyper and you're high and drunk. You usually just sit and think. You usually don't do crazy things. 
So it's a good thing you've never participated in anything like this, right? So you and Eric have never done anything, right? That's why you had pics of them naked on your phone. Oh. I've never engaged in it. I've only, it's, a, it's a stupid fantasy that I'm going to crucify. So I guess in a year or two, we'll get another confession video about how this is a lie on this video and how you have been active with other men. So looking forward to that in 2021. I've sent inappropriate photos to women on Instagram. And there he is covering his tracks. Doing damage control. Getting ahead of my video before it's uploaded. What, an, what a disgrace you are. When you stand in front of God, you're going to be disgraced. I'm just a piece of garbage. I'm just a sinner. Who did get saved by grace in January of 2010, but did not truly submit and yield to the Lord until this weekend. <laughs> oh, so you... <laughs> You weren't submitted to the Lord all this time. Not until last weekend. Oh, now it makes sense. So on all of those repentance videos you did in January and February, you weren't submitted then. And on that final goodbye video in February, you weren't submitted then either. There was no true deliverance. Because I hadn't gotten to the place yet that I fully surrendered to God. And that's what I'm doing now. And then on your next update video, you weren't submitted then either. But you are now. Well, it's really great that you're finally submitted. So now we can see some real changes in your life. Oh, except you look the same, if not worse. <laughs> mm. because I had not come to terms with the fact that I was an addict and that I needed help so there you go all right Whew. actually I feel a little better <laughs> it's all out there there it is yeah it's all out there how long until his next confession video where he covers all the things he omitted on this one if you want to unsubscribe and unfollow me and hate me and okay so look at the build up here dramatic pause to set you up for the most important part trying to maintain his subscriber count he goes for sympathy as he's crying if you want to unfollow and unsubscribe and hate me I understand wah wah if you hate me and want to unsubscribe, I understand. He's trying to equate hate and unsubscribe as the same thing, which is ridiculous. He's counting on that, no way, bro, I'll stay sub to you, response from his typical subscribers. Because at the end of the day, this is really all he cares about is trying to get his YouTube channel back up and running and get revenue and donations coming back in. This dude is losing a lot of money right now, potentially $100,000 a year. He's got a lot of scamming to make up for if he's going to get close to that figure. But the good thing is, is that now we know that he's fully submitted to the Lord. I'm sorry for all of you who sent me money and I spent it on Phil. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Go ahead and prove to the entire Christian community, dude, that you're not a real Christian. Please forgive me. Everyone, please forgive me. I'm a broken sinner at the feet of the cross, weeping for mercy. to kick me when I'm down you can go ahead I'd understand again he wants you to feel sorry for him he wants your sympathy 
No one wants to kick you, but that doesn't mean you get a free pass. If you're truly sorry for running a scam and stealing money, then delete your channel and leave YouTube. At least in a ministry capacity, if you want to start a new channel about something authentic to you, and maybe you can earn income that way, that's fine. But stop posing as a Christian minister of any position. That is your real sin. That is your real crime. So stop while you're ahead because you're actually very fortunate that you were not prosecuted. And if you continue to pose as a Christian minister and collect donations, that is criminal activity. And next time, you may not fare so well. But there you have it. Full confession. I'm on my way to rehab. I'm going to get some help from Christians. It's a Christian ministry. They're going to help with all of this. And uh, I'm going to come out a new man. One, one of the guys uh, that goes to the program came to the conference this weekend. And uh, he's graduating in 10 days. And he, he told me, Murray, I'm a new person. And it gave me hope. I see all these guys in that home and they're being made new. And I, I, I'm excited. Because this is gross. This is sick. This isn't me. If you're stuck being who deep down you know you're not, please seek God and get help. And that's the angle he's going to use to get back on YouTube. How God can help you overcome drugs. That's going to be his next big ministry push. He's going to show up out of the blue one day in the near future and talk about how God delivered him from drugs and how he can do it for you too. And of course, he's going to have to make videos to show you how and then start getting ad rev and donations all over again. Be vigilant, people. Keep me in prayer, Faith Fam. I love you and I'm so sorry for letting you all down. I hope they bought this. I'm a really good I'm a really good salesman. Salesman.